So here's what I want to do. I want to jump in this word, if it's okay with y'all. Um, because, man, listen, the Lord gave me a word. He, does, he gives me, feeds me all the time. But how many of you know there's just sometimes a word will stick in your spirit? And man, I'm telling you, you'll go to bed with it on your mind. You'll wake up with it on your mind. And, uh, and so this is one of those words. And I'm excited to, to, to give this to you. But if I had a title, I'm big on titles. I, I like titles. I think titles sum up the sermon. If I had a title, I would title this sermon a stump called faith. A stump. Everybody say a stump. Now, some of you acting like a stump. Now, listen to me, so uh, thank you, Lord. Uh, a stump called faith. So here's the deal. I want you to look, prophesy this with me. I want you to go ahead and look at your neighbor and say, you, you look like a stump. <laughs> go ahead and tell him, you look like a stump. Listen, come on, y'all smile. It's not First Baptist of Frigidaire. Come on. Yeah, so, yeah, tell them again. They, they wouldn't listen. I'm just telling y'all. They wouldn't tell somebody else. You, you, you remind me of a stump. You remind me of a stump. Yeah, you remind me of a stump. So, uh, listen, it's okay, because I'm going to give you all the word about a stump that some of y'all probably have never read in y'all's Bible. But it's important that you get this word. It's found in Daniel chapter 4. Tell them again. Say, you remind me of a stump. The whole service, y'all going to be looking and say, you remind me of a stump. You remind me of a stump. Just stump it. Um, Daniel chapter 4. Verse 14 and 15 is where I'm going to be taking my text from. And I'm excited to download this in y'all's spirit. And so Daniel chapter 4, verse 14 and 15. I'm reading out the NIV. His, the Bible says, he God. He God called in a loud voice. Here, this just, this just trumps a lot of people. Because they think, God don't have a loud voice. The Bible says that one day that he's going to look over and tell Jesus, go get his children. He's going to command with a loud voice. A loud voice. Here's what he said. And it's kind of, if it, I'll, I'll give you a background he said, he called with a loud voice, cut down the tree. Everybody say, cut down the tree. So important you get this. And trim off its branches. Yeah, strip off its leaves and scatter its fruit. Let the animals flee from under it and the birds from its branches. I like this. This is so good. I get, how many of y'all get excited about reading the Bible? I, it just tears me up. It tears me up. But he said this. God said this. But let the stump... And its roots remain. Oh, I'm preaching better than y'all acting. Let the stump and let the roots remain. Watch this. Bound it with iron and bronze. Watch. Remain in the ground. Hallelujah. In the grass of the field. Now listen to me very carefully. Lean in and listen to this very carefully. I got to set a foundation. This was a prophecy. Yes, it was Old Testament. But it, how many of you know the, the Old Testament is a schoolmaster to the New Testament? You can't have the new without the old. So listen, it was a prophecy over King Nebuchadnezzar. And I love this. It was over his life. The prophecy was saying, it's pretty simple. There's going to be seasons in your life. I love this. There's going to be seasons in your life. You're going to feel like a big old oak tree. There's going to be seasons in your life that, man, your branches are going to be strong. There's going to be seasons in your life where you're producing fruit. I'm preaching. Listen. There's going to be seasons in your life, man, where you feel like you got it going on. That no weapon formed against you should ever prosper. You'll quote the Bible. You'll live the Bible. There's going to be good, great, and wonderful seasons. But I love this because this helps me out. All of a sudden, he said, but listen, there's also going to be seasons hmm, in your life where you're going to feel like that tree's been cut down. You're going to feel like you've been stripped of everything that you once was. You're going to have no leaves. You're not producing fruit. I hear it all the time. I see it all the time. Preachers come and go. It's just the way it is. There's going to be good seasons and there's going to be bad seasons. I want y'all to lean in and I want y'all to listen to this pastor this morning. We as Christians, we love the good seasons. But here's what I'm telling you. We live in a foreign land. We're just passing through this old world. This is not my home. We got people that would pay more attention to live in 70 years than we do for eternity in heaven. God said this. He said, King Nebuchadnezzar, there's going to be good days and there's going to be bad days. And then there's going to be some stinking days. There's going to be days where you felt like an oak tree and you was invincible. Am I preaching? Is everybody getting this? 
Am I talking to anybody here today? That there's going to be good days, you're going to feel like an oak tree. But there's going to be more days. This is truth. There's going to be more days where you're going to say, oh God, where's my life? Lord God, where are you? God, I feel like I've been stripped of everything that I've ever had. But I love, I love this. And man, this ministered to me this week. And this, this sermon may be just for me. And if it is, watch this. I'll receive it. He said, I'm not going to leave you with nothing. Whew. I'm not going to leave you with nothing. Even though the king ended up seven years going out in the cow pasture and eating with the cows. I, that's another sermon. I love this. God says, I'm not going to leave you with not anything. He says, you're going to be stripped. You're going to be cut down. There's going to be hard days, good days, bad days, ugly days. Watch this, y'all ready? It's called life. But I love this. He said, I'm going to leave you with a stump. And this is what God downloaded in my heart. He did not leave him without anything. Some of you, I see this, I hear this. Man, when you do three funerals in one week and you see hurt and you say, where is God in the midst of this hurt? I don't know about y'all, but I've asked that question before. Y'all, y'all may be good. Y'all probably need to be up here preaching a sermon, to be honest with you. Because I'm just telling y'all, there's been dry days in my life. There's been times where I felt, God, where are you at? But God says, you're going to be stripped. You're going to be cut. Hallelujah. But I, I, God said, don't you mess with the stump. Don't you mess with the roots. Don't you mess with anything that I have touched and I have put together because God is for us. How many of y'all glad that we serve a stump God? Hallelujah. A stump God. Y'all ain't even got to my sermon yet, but it's good. Yeah, stump God. There's going to be days. Why is, watch this, look. Why does it shock us? Why, why, why does it shock us? And I'm going to explain this deeper in just a moment. But listen, he said, don't mess with the stump and leave the roots alone. Don't you, you may feel you're cut, you're stripped. You don't even know why you're at church today. Come on, somebody. Well, I'm just going to go to church today. No, you're a stump. You're a stump. And you still have roots in your life. The Bible says you train up your children in the way that they should go. I hold God to the word. I hold him to the word. I hold him because you know why? I was one of the prodigals. But I had a praying granny. I had a praying mama. I had somebody that says, you know what? I know what God started in Brian Keith and he's going to finish it in Brian Keith. I had, watch this, I had some days I felt like I was cut. But I still had root. There were some days I feel like, why in the wood in the world's going on in my life? I don't feel like I've got a purpose, but i got a stump. Oh, hallelujah. And I know some of you are sitting here today, and this is what God spoke to me. It's not what you have left that makes a difference. Listen to me very carefully. I know some of you are sitting there going, well, Brian, I've lost this. I feel like I've lost my anointing. I, I've lost my praise. I've, I mean, I'm, it's the truth. It's truth. And I'm telling you, listen to me. My, my question to you today is this. Do you have anything left? I'm, you're cut. The tree's not standing like it once was. Your, your leaves are gone. And you feel like you have no purpose. Am I preaching to somebody, anybody here today? My question to you is this. Do you have anything left? Do you have any praise left? See, what I'm asking is this. Here's what I got to do sometimes in my life. When I don't feel like praising, that's when I need to praise. When I don't feel like praying, I make myself pray. When I go into my closet in Matthew chapter 6 and I shut the door, it don't matter what you think, what Dana thinks, what anybody thinks. I know this. I got to find Jesus because Jesus got I'm just telling you, do you have any, any, anything left in your life? Do you have your promises left? Do you have any joy left? Watch this, I'm going somewhere. Have you stopped dreaming? Do you have a dream left? Because God says, watch. If you have anything left attached to that stump that's got root. I'm, he said, I'm going to revisit the stump. See, some of you are looking at me and you say, well, God's left me. I don't feel God. I'm here today to prophesy over your life. That I serve a God... 
that you may not know where he's at. You may feel like you're lost in the shuffle. You may feel, I don't have no praise left. But I serve a God that told, told Daniel to tell King Nebuchadnezzar, I'm going to revisit the stump. And as long as the stump has roots, it is connected to me. Whatever you're, watch, hallelujah, whatever you're rooted in is what you're going to produce in. The devil may come at you one way, but I got a God that will raise up a standard and scatter him seven different ways. You may feel like the lions are now looking you dead in the eye. All you got to do is stand up, throw your head up, put your shoulders back, and declare that God. I see a bunch of stumps today. I see some stumps here today. You feel like, man, where in the world's my life gone? What is God doing? Well, what's the purpose behind this? Turn to your neighbor and say, you remind me of a stump. Now listen to me, I'm not making fun, I'm not, we've all, we've all had pain. We've all got pain in our life. Some people here today, you feel definitely like a stump. You've been cut, you've been stripped, and you're down, it feels like nothing. But you got a pastor in front of you that's sitting here today saying, listen, as long as you've got root, you'll produce. No matter where you're at. No matter where you're at, you will produce. As long as you've got root, you'll produce. Somebody, somebody give God praise really quick. Really, really, come on. Don't, don't give God praise. I'm going to praise him. I may not feel like it, but I've got root in my life. I know where my strength comes from. I know where my joy comes from, and it comes from the Lord. Somebody give God praise. Come on. Come on, make yourself praise him. Come on, make yourself praise him. Make yourself praise him. You say, Brian, that's silly. No, 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 no. Because there's going to be some stump days in your life. You're going to feel like people have abandoned you. Am I preaching to anybody? You're going to feel like the, the, the world has stripped you. But I love God. He says, you feel like you've been cut, stripped. And now, I love this. God says, I'm going to revisit the stump. I need somebody to receive that right now. That God says, I'm getting ready. I feel the Holy Ghost. That I'm getting ready to revisit you. I know you feel like that you're in the fire. I know that you feel like you're in the lion's den. I know you feel like the family has abandoned you. I know you feel lonely. But I see a bunch of stumps in my heart today. That God said, thus saith the Lord, that God is going to revisit the stump. And I need somebody who believes what this pastor's preaching to receive it right now in the name of Jesus Christ. That's five people. I'm at the wrong house. Because, I, I, listen, I talk to people every day of my life. You feel lonely. You feel abandoned. Where's God at? I'm stripped. I don't even want to praise him right now. But God spoke into my spirit Friday and said, you tell the people that I'm getting ready to come back and I'm going to revisit the stump. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. I want y'all to write this down. The lost is painful. Listen, I, <laughs> the lost is painful, but what's left is powerful. Oh, my God. The, 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 what you have lost, it's painful. But I'm declaring in Jesus Christ's name that if you've got a stump and it's still got roots, you're going to produce in Jesus Christ's name. I'm telling you, the lost is painful, but what's left is powerful. The lost is painful, but what's left is powerful. One more time, preacher. The lost is painful, but what's left is powerful. Somebody give him praise. Yep, that's right. Yep. You say, Brian, prove it. Well, I'm glad you asked. I'm so glad you asked. What about Job? See, I think we just talk about Job as just a Bible character. Listen to me. He was real. There was a man named Job. He had ten children. He was married. He had three friends. And that's about right. Everybody think, I got ten friends. You can count them on my granny. Say, you can count them on one hand. Granny's still preaching. Three friends. Three friends. And watch his job. He, listen to me. He lost everything. 
Y'all think about this just for a moment. This helps me. Because when I think I'm having a bad day, I just read the book of Job. Job, he lost his resources, everything. He lost his health. He lost all ten of his children. He lost his home. He lost his farm. He lost his livestock. He lost his friends and his own wife. Said, won't you just cuss God and die? Won't you just give up? Won't you just back off, Job? Evidently, Job, it's not working for you. And I love Job. I just love him because there's something about Job that we all need. Turn to your neighbor and say, you look like Job today. Yeah. I'm so glad. I'm so glad that I know, I know the editor of the story. See, some of you, you feel like, man, I am, I'm down. I can't get back up. I'm telling you, you need to use your emergency button and call 911 today, the Holy Ghost, and say, I have fallen. I can't get up. But God will get you back up. God will stand you up. He said, he said, Brian, you don't know what you're talking. I know what I'm preaching. I know what I'm preaching. And you know, when, when you walk down that road, you, you can preach it with fire. When you've been somewhere and you've went through the fire and you've faced the lines and you've faced sickness and you've faced death. See, sometimes God will put you flat on your back. That way, the only thing you can do is look up. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost today. Oh, it feels good in here. I love Job. Job, Job. Everybody say Job. I know Job got cut down. It's real. I don't know what in the world I would do if I lost my two babies. I don't. But I want to be like Job. I love Job because the Bible says that Job shaved his head. He rent his clothes. clothes, And he sat in a pile of ashes. And sometimes I feel like I'm sitting in a pile of ashes. Sometimes I feel like I ain't lying to you. Are y'all okay? Are y'all okay with truth? Because here's what the church has got its PhD in. You act so good in here and leave this place and don't know how to live. I come by to tell somebody today, God is going to revisit the stump. I'm, I stop by. Some of you don't even feel God right now. But God is getting ready to revisit the stump. And if you say, well, I'm in the back. Watch this. He walks the aisle. You can't, well, <laughs> you can't outrun the Holy Ghost. You may hide, but you can't get away from him. Because if you've got root, there's going to be something that's going to well up in you. When everybody walks out, he'll walk in. Hallelujah. When everybody else gives up on, there'll be something that'll rise up in you. And say, you know what? What I started in you, I'm going to finish in you. Somebody give him praise. I'm trying to preach. Woo! Hallelujah! It's real. I love Job. Job said these words, naked I came into the world and naked I'm going to leave the world. But one thing I know is my Redeemer lives. How many of y'all can testify? Naked I came into this world and naked I'm going to leave this world. But one thing I can testify is I've got an old stump that's got some roots. Hmm, this is good. Uh, my Redeemer lives. Watch this. Job 13 verse 15. Oh, how many of y'all feel the Holy Ghost? Isn't this good? Yeah, that's, why you got, that's why it's important to be in a spirit-filled church. It's, it's, it's important. Now listen, these, I, I got stick. Job chapter 13, verse 15. He says, though he slays me. Listen to me. This is real. Job felt slayed. The dude shaved his head, tore his clothes, and sat in a pile of ashes. His three friends said, man, I don't know what you got going on in your life, dude, but you've done something wrong. God must be punishing you. How many of y'all heard that before? I have. That's a lie from hell. Sometimes God will allow you to go through the valley to find the stump. Sometimes God will allow, listen, we don't like to talk about it. Everybody's scared to talk about it. But sometimes God will allow a tragedy to find the stump. I'm not one of these type of preachers going to get in front of y'all and give y'all a fluff gospel. It don't work. It don't work. When you do three funerals in one week, you kind of get fired up on a Sunday morning. Because why you got breath in your lungs? Why don't you just praise him? 
Why you can stand to your feet and why don't you just praise him? Well, why you've got oxygen that you can breathe? Don't wait till you're on your deathbed to say, I better get things right. You can get it right today. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo, settle down, Brian. No, y'all settle up. Job says, though he slays me, yet I will trust him. Ten kids, his wife turned her back on him. Three friends walked out on him. He lost his livestock, he lost his home. And watch this, in one day. This didn't happen over a year. Jimmy, this was one day. One day, this joker lost it all. There had to be something in Joe. Come on, y'all, listen to me. There had to be something in Job that he was rooted to. And I'm telling y'all, when the storms come, and they're coming. Yeah, when the, when the wind blows. And it don't look good over your life. You may get a bad doctor's report. Your friends may walk out on you. Your marriage may be in some shambles. But I declare today, there's a stump. And that stump's got roots. That's why some people can be on their deathbed and so help me God, they look more peaceful than people who are alive. They look more happier than y'all do right now. Crazy. Crazy. I always preach this sermon. I always say, what if somebody could escape hell and be here today? Y'all think I'm loud. If somebody could escape the pits of hell and take your place, I don't want to be here. They would be glad to trade places with you, sir. And if a man escaped hell or a woman escaped hell and was up here preaching, y'all would think hell doesn't come. So listen to this. He said, though I feel like, hell, Lord, yes, I feel slight, I will trust the Lord. One translation said it like this. Even if heaven tried to destroy me, watch this, I still put my trust and confidence in the Lord. So there was something special about Job. Would y'all agree with that? There, there was something special about it. Listen, what you have left will produce double of what you have lost. If you'll hang on, I want y'all to write that down if you're a note taker. I'm telling you, you're going to need this sermon. There's going to be a day when you feel like everything's been stripped out of your life. You're gonna, there's something going to happen. I'm telling y'all. We live in the Bible Belt. And Lord, you can't get people to even come to church. What's going to happen when the, the government turns their face against us? What's going to happen when, when, they, when, we try to become, when they try to make us become a communist country? Well, what's going to happen? I'm telling you, listen to me. You, you better be a stump. You better have some roots in your life. It's so easy to sit in here today and say, as for me and my house, we're going to praise the Lord. We're going to worship God until it's stump day. Not hump day, stump day. Because when it's stump day, I'm telling you, the only ones I feel the Holy Ghost is the remnant. The only ones that's going to stand is the ones that's got root. The only ones that's going to say, you know what? Come hell or high water. Come good days, bad days, sorry days. If I, I'm a stump. I'm a stump. I've got, I've got root. And watch this. I've been to seminary. I've got the alphabet in front of my name. And watch this. I've had more so-called Christians to try to talk me out of the Bible, well, that's just not good for the day. Why, why do you need to speak in tongues? Why, why do you need to... Pro I'll tell you why I need to speak in tongues. Y'all ready? Y'all lean in. Because a lot of y'all's asked that. Why does B-Ref got to speak in tongues? Because the Bible says when you... Listen, the one language that the devil does not know is a heavenly language. It's a heavenly language. Why do I need to speak in the Holy Ghost? It gives me power. You get under the anointing. Then you can, I'm telling you, when, I'm telling you, it's what the Bible says, that you can lay hands upon a sick and they shall recover. An average little joker who's not full of the Holy Ghost won't even try it. Y'all get that for free. Yeah, why, why, why? I, I ain't going to do it. It causes confusion. Here, let, let, me, let me break the light that life really quick while God's dealing with this area. Y'all know who tongues is for? First Corinthians, unbelievers. Whew. 
on, 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 <laughs> I'm getting ready to go. Unbelievers. You know why it's for unbelievers? It says this in your Bible, 1 Corinthians 14. It's so good. The tongues <laughs> is for the unbeliever. Because the unbeliever sitting there going, man, there is something about that person. I may not know what they're speaking, but they're speaking something, and it's touched my heart. It, it was a sign for the unbelievers that when they walk into the presence of God, something changes. Something's different. Do it. Do, do, it. do a Bible study with me. Be great. Y'all remember this? Listen to this. In Luke 22. Everybody say Luke 22. And yes, I'm Holy Ghost Spirit filled pastor. And uh, I, I do not apologize for the gift that God has given me. I receive it in Jesus Christ's name. I need it. I pray the whole world <laughs> gets baptized in the Holy Ghost. I do. Because then we won't have to worry about love. We, listen, we won't have to worry about love. Because if you're full of the Holy Ghost, you'll love. Even those who persecute you. Uh-oh, let me go on. That's another sermon. One thing that Satan is after, y'all watch. It's called a stump called faith. It's a stump called faith. Y'all remember in Luke 22, Peter was having a, a stump day. Peter was up against God, and he was like, you know, God, he said, Satan's, God actually said this, that Satan is after you, Peter, to sift you like, wait, there's a comma in that verse. We, we forget about it. But God said, Peter, I, I don't pray for your church attendance. He didn't say, how much are you tithing? He said these words. He said, Peter, I'm praying for your faith that your faith will fail you not. One thing that the enemy is after right now in this church, in this community, he's after our faith. Because he knows if he can work on the stump. And cuts you down. A lot of people are surrendering. If he can keep lying, y'all keep, a lot of people keep surrendering. But what? Luke 22 verse 32 says this, But I, Jesus, have prayed for you, Simon Peter, that your faith may not fail. And watch this. And when you turn back, I love this, listen to me. And when you turn back and you feel like you've been cut down and you've been stripped in your life, he said, strengthen your brothers. Strengthen your brothers. Somebody ought to be able to look at your life. And even if you get cut down, stripped, I'm telling you, there ought to be something in your life called a root called faith. That they can look at your life and say, you know what? That strengthens me. That helps me. Y'all with me? Say, I'm with you. Listen to this. Y'all remember Samson? Judges chapter 6. Note takers. So, listen. Samson had a stump. He, Samson, listen to this, one of the strongest men in the world. I, I don't understand how strong this joker was, but he was strong. So Samson was with a little gal that God didn't give him called Delilah. Somebody may, I don't know what, who, who is that? You with Delilah. Anyway. So Samson was laying in bed and Delilah said, Samson. Where does your strength come from? And man, he joker said, he said, I don't know. He said, uh, he said like two or three different things. And all of a sudden, the joker told the truth. He said, Delilah, my strength is in my hair. This joker killed a thousand foxes. This dude, he tied a thousand fox tails together and went, yo, like it, pew, gone. Strong. Killed, killed 600 people at one time. So Samson told her the truth. And all of a sudden, he fell asleep. Be careful, because when you fall asleep, the enemy will take advantage of you. That's another word. So he fell asleep, Delilah cut his hair. And then all of a sudden, she said, I'm going to see if you... Samson, the Philistines are here. The joker got up, went outside to whip every one of them, and lost his strength. Watch what happened. See, your sin, watch. Your sin will take you farther than you want to go. Your sin will find you out in a dark season. Your sin will cut you down, strip you. But if you don't have a stump with some roots, I'm telling you. So here's what happened. Here's what happened. He, he had no hair. They, they gouged his eyes out. Y'all believe this? 
Y'all yeah, really believe that there was a man named Samson. They, they literally gouged his eyes out. His eyeballs come out of his head, hit the ground. Brian, that's graphic. No, when someone gouges your eyes out, that's pretty graphic. They put him on a working wheel, night and day, night and day, night and day. He'd work, he'd work, he'd work, he'd work. You know where Delilah messed up? The Lord spoke this unto me. You know where Delilah messed up? It's so good. Delilah cut his hair, but she forgot about his roots. Let me go this side. You know where Delilah messed up? She cut his hair, but she forgot about his root. Are y'all getting this? Because I worked really hard on this sermon, so don't sit there and go. That's hard. When a pastor works hard on a sermon, and y'all just sit there and go, you, you preach next Sunday. You got to receive, watch, you got to receive this word. We've had so much Bible in South Central, we should have done led all South Central to Jesus Christ. There should be nobody dying and going to hell in South Central. We got 131 churches in South Central. And so, 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 so listen to this. I'm almost done praising y'all come. That's the first time. Y'all stay try third time. No, I'm joking. Y'all come on. So here's the deal. She cut his hair, but she left the roots. Everybody say, she cut his hair, but she left the roots. I love this. The Bible says, the Bible says in, 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 in hit me out the ghost, Judges chapter 6. It says that his hair began to grow because he had root. So no matter if you feel like you've been cut, eventually you're going to get back up. Because whatever you're rooted in will eventually start growing again. I feel the Holy Ghost today. Whatever you're rooted in, eventually you'll start growing in again. So what? Let the devil. Some of y'all just need to serve that joker notice. Oh, you, you, may, you may be tempting me right now. You may be trying me right now. I may feel like an old oak tree that's been cut down and stripped of everything that I've got, but I've still got roots. And if I've got roots, I will eventually produce in Jesus Christ. That's a word for somebody. So here's what God told me to tell y'all. And he told me this first, and I wrote it down in my notes. It was like God said, Brian, I, I know you're born again. I know you're saved. Y'all with me? Sam, I'm with you. Come on. I'm almost done, I promise. I should, I should never say that. God just convicted me. You should never have to tell a Christian. Guys, five more minutes, I'm almost done. Because all I'm doing is making an excuse for you to go out and, and not be transformed. So if you leave the same way you came in, it's on you. It's that real. See, what we're doing up here is real. It's real. It's more than a guitar. It's more than a bass. It's more than a voice. Y'all with me? Here's what she is. God says, Brian, he, he spoke this to me. I know you're saved. This is so crazy, but no, it's a, God just convicted me again. He said, I just got to tell y'all, this is what he said. But is your brain saved? Y'all know where your miracle starts? In your mind. His eyes were gouged. Hair was cut. On a working wheel. But Job had something and Samson had something. No matter what, I'm still rooted. No matter what, I'm not giving up on Jesus Christ. Come hell or high water, I'm in it to win it. I'm going to be a difference maker. I'm going to be a kingdom connector. If they, if they like me, good. If they don't, better. I'm going to do what God has called me to do. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. We got to get back in this church. I'm going to ask you today. I know you're saved. But is your brain saved? Is your brain transformed? Is your brain, does it, does it connect to the word of God? You can sit here. But is your brain saved? You say, Brian, that's crazy. No, no, no. No, it's not. Because if your brain gets saved, you'll get transformed. Because where the head goes, the body's going to follow. Y'all getting me today. Somebody say, I got you. Turn to your neighbor and say, is your brain saved? 
Yeah, ask them again. They didn't hear nothing. Is your brain saved? Y'all's brain saved. If your brain saved, <laughs> something's going to happen. No matter what happens, I got a stump. Watch, here's the deal. If all of y'all come against me, watch this, I'm going to still serve God. If I got to go to jail, I probably will. Will y'all visit me? Will y'all bring me sugar-free cookies? Y'all laugh a little bit, man. It's okay, y'all. Some of y'all are like, some of y'all need to be saved. You're like, y'all are scaring me. It's okay. It is okay. But it's not okay if you walk out the same way you walked in. Listen to me. Turn to your neighbor one more time while, while they're paying attention and say, is your brain saved? Robbie Bale, is your brain saved? So let's, let's, let's conclude with Samson. Samson was at his uh, last fleet, last part of his life. Think about this. It's almost dying time. Almost dying time. How many of y'all know you're going to die? Come on, raise your hand. If, if, watch. I promise you, unless the rapture takes place, you're going to die. Don't wait to get on your deathbed. Make it right today. That little Izzy, you know what she did? She looked at her daddy and she said, Daddy, it's time. He said, time for what? She said, it's time to get saved. She walked this aisle. Her daddy right behind her. She got baptized today. That's good news. That's good news. Amen. Samson. Everybody say Samson. I'm almost done. That's the third time. We're going to wrap it up. We're landing the plane. There was a little boy in the, in the temple. He heard the little boy talking. And he said, young man, he said, where am I at? Young man looked at him. He said, sir, you're in the arena. He'd been there before. God, I could preach this all day. He'd been there. He, he got back to a familiar place. And all of a sudden, he said, young man, he said, uh, I'm in an arena. And he said, yes, sir, you're in an arena. He said these words. I read, it's so good. I can't wait to give this to y'all. He said, is there any columns? Is there anything holding up things that's not supposed to be held up? <laughs> the little boy said, yes, sir, you're standing by him. And he said, young man, he said, will you put my right hand, will you put my right hand on the column? And will you put my left hand on the column? Because I'm at a familiar place. I've been here a lot of times in my life. I've been stripped down. I've been tore down. I know where I'm at. I feel the Holy, I feel the Holy Ghost. Oh. And the young man said, yes, sir, I will. He put his right hand on one column. He put his left hand on another column. And I love this. Samson looked at him. I can just see in my spirit. He said, young man, do me one more favor. <laughs> Woo. He said, yes, sir. He said, when I say amen, run. <laughs> run. When, when I get through praying and I give my God praise for my life, I know I've been cut down. I know I've been stripped. But I serve a God that's on the right and I serve a God that's on the left. I need somebody to give God a praise in here. He's on the right and he's on the left. He's a good God. But you got to push. You got to push. You got to push back. You can't give up. You cannot give up. You got to learn to push. Woo! I feel the Holy Ghost. Oh, Jesus, my God. Oh. He pushed what was holding up the false temple. It came crushing down. And the Bible says he killed more people in one event than he did all his days. Here's what I'm saying. And I want them to put this on the big screen. I love y'all, golly. How many of y'all glad you come to church today? I'm so glad y'all are here. 
And I'm so glad y'all are here. I want them to put this on the big screen. I want them to leave it up. I want them to leave this up. Here's, here's my sermon. You still have a stump called faith. No matter what. Aaron, as you go off to the college, I'm not going to lie to you, young man. College is not high school. The temptation is still there. But you've got a, you've got a stump. Youth group, look at me. I know high school's tough. I know y'all probably don't fit in good. God designed you to stand out. But no matter what happens, who I feel, I'm trying to behave. No matter what happens, you still got a stump. I know your mamas and I know your daddies. Y'all got some stumps. That no matter what happens, you've got a stump and you've got roots. And whatever you're rooted in is what you're going to produce in. Elkhorn, you still have a, a, a stump called faith. You still have roots. And God will use what you have left. Y'all hear me? Come on, do y'all hear this, Pastor, this morning? Look, you still have a stump. I don't feel the Lord. You still have a stump. I can't even praise Him today, Brian. You still have a stump. Brian, I've lost my loved ones. You still have a stump. I would have quit ministry a long time ago. Look at me. A long time ago. If I didn't have a stump. It's hard being a pastor. It's hard being a leader. It's hard being y'all, right? I would have quit. A divorced man, I would have quit. Matter of fact, I was told to quit the ministry. Isn't it sound good to see you too? Mikey Hatcher. Oh, Mikey, you got a stump, don't you? Yeah, you used to be a youth over here. Now you're a proclaimer, man. The word's in you. It's burning. You got a stump. Thank you for serving our country. Thank y'all for being here. We love y'all. Thank y'all for being here, man. Hallelujah. So, um, you still have a stump called faith. You still have roots. <laughs> Why am I standing? I've got roots. I've got roots. I've got roots. I've got roots. That's why I'm standing. I've lost loved ones. I've buried two babies. People have turned their backs. I've had people to walk out. <laughs> but I've got roots. And I'm looking at a bunch of stumps today. I'm sorry. But when you feel it, you just feel it. Y'all remain. Because the world's after us. It's not our home. I don't know where y'all are at. I know where I'm at. But you got to be a stump. And even if you're cut down, stripped, you still got roots. I need somebody who still has roots, even though you've been cut, even though you've been stripped down. You still root it, and you got a root called praise. Somebody give God a big old praise in here today. Come on, God, we praise you. God, we thank you for the stumps in our life, God. We thank you for the good, the hard, the bad times, God. We love you in this house, God. We come to give you praise here today, God. I've got a stump and it's got roots in my life, God. Woo! This altar's open. I don't know where y'all are at. Let God love on you, please. You're not alone. You're not alone. You're not alone. You may feel like Job this morning. You may feel like Samson. Watch, there's a column right by you. You got to push it out of your life. You got to push it out. I'm not going to do this no more. So Father God, in Jesus Christ's name, I've done exactly what you have told me to do. Thank you for your sweet spirit. Bless these precious people. Bless our Facebook family, God. Lord, save somebody right now. Lord, I see a bunch of stumps. 
I see a bunch of roots. Lord, I pray today, God, that, Lord, we would give back to Thee in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, leave it all behind. Let's come. This altar's open.